Hey guys, Digital Lifestyle here, back with another video. Right, this one's on uh, from Digital Assets Week, uh, which took place in California, uh, 2023. Uh, fireside chat, they're going to talk, talk about what assets are going to be tokenized and be deployed. They'll also talk about the challenges that um, the, 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 the market faces and how they did institutional um, investors are requiring um, that people, uh, that they invest in to crypto and this is from state street uh, institutional investor and jp morgan and um this guy here he's the uh, one asking the questions and his name is uh owner uh, old uh, um he is uh his name is amy ben david but um he's the old founder of ceo founder and ceo of owner owner I have no idea what owner is i might have to go and look at that actually uh, but before i do that i'm going to play you the video from them speaking about what's going on with this market and how the, what the challenges are within the space and i want you to hear the uh, guy introduce these two people as well because it's important to have that you know very interesting discussion here with two representative of major institutions that are coming into the tokenization into the dlt space i think that in the beginning of the tokenization uh, uh movement and we I see a lot of faces here who have been here from the beginning. It wasn't very institutional, but now it's becoming very institutional. And I think it's very important to hear what institutions are doing, how institutions are thinking, what is the vision, and you know what, what we can expect from major institutions. So I want to start with uh, Donna and Scott and ask each of you to describe a little bit about you know what you're doing in a space and what is your vision for how digitization is going to affect your bigger business your bigger business and 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 what we can expect in that space don't know <laughs> great uh great well thank you so much for having me um uh ami and, and scott but um so you know state street is an institution that really supports the institutional investor so that's really important obviously jp morgan is much bigger and uh much more diversified but we kind of do one thing and that is support the institutional investor um we do that in asset servicing in kind of the analog world, uh, as well as have a small money manager that manages a bunch of money. Um, so with that, we follow our clients like everybody I'm sure does. Uh, and our institutional investors are really fascinated by the technology. I'd say they've really de-emphasized crypto uh, for the most part, except for in uh, other you know small pockets of uh, the client base. And they're looking to distributed ledger technology and smart contracts to really solve real world problems that they have today. They see real benefits in um, uh, solving problems like operational efficiencies, lowering cost, all the things you know, uh, providing more liquidity, uh, maybe new distribution. Uh, I noticed she mentioned smart contracts. That's DeFi uh, for those who are still wondering what smart contracts are. They're DeFi, decentralized um, contracts that allow things to happen um, simultaneously um, without much interference. So there is a need for smart contracts. It's like um, with the banking system at the moment, it's so all, all over the place. You're not sure if the transaction is going to get there, but this is how the old system works. And this is why I think they're tearing it down bit by bit, um, making it crash, unfortunately, by putting up high interest rates and all those kind of things. And, uh, and squeezing people into a position where they'll have to accept um, the new digital pound, yen, whatever they they, they decide, um, because it is a controlled demolition right, as far as I'm concerned, what's going on, and war, war is the final part of it all. And at the end of it, that chooses who comes through with whatever rules and technologies they're gonna bring forward. And we're seeing, um, many countries now going forward with, with adoption of tech technology and, and um having the standardization which is the iso 2 122 compliance standard uh channels so they come to us as their service provider to help them figure out how to do that. Some of our clients are very sophisticated and want to do it themselves and have been testing and, and issuing uh, tokens and coins all along. But many of them are really not. They're looking for their service provider to really provide those services to them. Um, so that's how kind of we're approaching it. And we've been at this now for you know uh, more than a handful of years. Uh, and we're focused on, um, you know, what our clients are focused on, which is how can you tokenize traditional assets? How do you, um, 
you know, issue uh, digitally native tokens, um, and then how do you provide custody, fund accounting, and administration, which is what we do in a, in a decentralized world. So that's kind of what we work on. And do you provide the services mostly to your clients, or do you also work closely with other institutions on projects? Uh, yes. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> so I'm assuming it's not something that you're seeing, seeing just from your clients. It's an industry wide. Yeah, and of course, like we would like new clients too. So it, you know, the the industry, the part of the industry that we uh, serve. Uh, you know, we've surveyed them. Uh, we've talked a lot to them. You know, obviously we're. We uh, uh, communicate with our clients all the time and prospective clients, and it's very similar uh, perspective that I just described. Yeah, I think the, I, the reason I asked the question is we sat here about a year ago, and it was the beginning of institutions coming in. And now I think of what I'm hearing from everybody, and I'm seeing it from you know representatives of, of City and, and JP and others and Goldman's, pretty, pretty much the same story. This is becoming an infrastructure, a future of markets, and so on. Scott, where do you, what do you, what do you guys uh, do right now in the spaces? More broadly, what is your vision for DLT in 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 your uh, operation? Um, th th thanks, Amy. So I guess almost flipping around the other way, we, we talk about markets, we talk about private markets, we talk about equities, we talk about fixed income. On the last panel, I've been part of panels, we had those same conversations. If they're one heterogeneous sorry, homogeneous market that if one thing changes, all will change, which clearly it won't. So I think when it comes back to what we're doing, um, I think our acceptance is that the vision of what this market will look like 10 years from now, if anyone's got that, then great. I think, you know, we're too early in the too early in the, in, in the story to really think about how much of each type of asset class in what market by what type will, will kind of eventually evolve into using this technology, other than to say, you know, I think a reasonable proportion of regulated markets will be on this technology using it in a, in a sophisticated way within a decade you know and what a reasonable proportional could be anywhere from the 10 percent mentioned previously to anywhere sort of sub 50 i don't think more for that is is a rational is a rational number um so what's jake morgan's kind of view of that i think yeah, quite clearly we've got our own platform we've had that for a few years we've done a lot of experimentation and development in that um you know and and we're very pleased with kind of how we can offer services to our clients on the onyx platform i think it's a really sort of a good start point for us to learn and for our let me just stop there for a second right remember when jp morgan said that oh um that any of his traders actually got into bitcoin uh, or crypto they would sack them but yeah this guy here is saying that they've been into it uh, for a number of years and they got their own blockchain called onyx clients to learn um what's possible in this space is it the end point absolutely not you know and that's why we also look at other platforms like HQLX, we're sort of doing stuff across the market, particularly in the markets business, because JP Morgan's, again, not one homogeneous entity. There's lots of different businesses within that. And within the markets business, our responsibility is to be able to provide liquidity to our clients across a range of different markets. That's not going to be done on a single platform or even a small handful of platforms. Certainly not the way the structure of the market is evolving. Um, so that means that, you know, are we going to have a regulatory imposition of sort of everyone get on DLT? No. Do policymakers buy that? No. Are they going to agree in the short term? No. So what's really going to happen is what we're seeing at the moment is a sort of federation of experimentation across different institutions to say, like, I can offer this for my clients, I can offer that for my clients, and then eventually sort of clients are saying, well, can you guys just pair up and offer that across so we get more liquidity? That's We're at the beginning of that phase now. Um, and so I think that's where we start to see interoperability, the experiment we did last year with you guys, HQX, et cetera, like, that's going to be a real thing, you know, partnership with broader custodians rather their own that's going to become a real thing um so i think that's sort of the shape of where we get to but federated experiments that do real things with economics associated with them where we'll start and the market will evolve from there it's a competitive market so, so maybe instead of the whole market agreeing to do one thing like was discussed before as a central mandated thing that everybody agreed to some interoperability solutions springing up uh, dynamically and, and organically connect, succeeding in connecting uh, uh, multiple organizations and then maybe... This is where Quant, Quant um, over Ledger, um, also you have interoperability with that Ledger when um, it comes to XRP. XRP is um, ODL and it's also uh, has an interledger. 
So you have all these different terminologies. I, I know it's sometimes a bit hard for other people to understand, but I think also if we all did our own research, we'll understand a lot more instead of just waiting to be spoon fed because it is incumbent on you to do your own research when it comes down to this market. As I said before, we are moving into a digital age. And I don't think many people on this, well, we have moved into the digital age. They are experimenting, for God's sake. You know, they're telling you what they're doing. JP Morgan's telling you, uh, um, State, straight, um, State Street's telling you. And these are institutional. One, well, JP Morgan dabbles with, with um, people like me and you. Not so much now that I've heard that Chase, which is um, one of their, um, one of their um, JP Morgan Chase, is not allowing um, people to, uh, to buy cryptos in the, in the UK, at least at this moment in time using the chase um, account so i've what's the point i've just destroyed it because if we're moving digital what's the point of not being able to buy digital assets well but mind you i never did use it anyhow so because i don't trust jp morgan um, at the end of the day but that's beside the point we're all moving into that direction uh, um and, and yes it, it, they said they they reckon maybe about 10 years out uh, but I think way before then things are, are going to happen. Um, they're experimenting, they're going to roll things out. Um, and do you know what? Right, Most people won't even know they're using blockchain. Maybe connecting to other similar networks to create basically a network of network. With the, I, mean, I think we, we've seen that. I mean, that's what we do, right? We innovate in pockets to solve problems. And that could be any kind of problem, you know, from an expense to new revenue to liquidity distribution, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, you expand from there. And usually we create fragmentation, which we are doing. <laughs> then you have to find ways to connect all that fragmentation, clean up the fragmentation. I mean, you know, any, every 30 years or so, we're kind of solving the same problem over and over again. That's exactly right. I think you see these sort of individual experiments deliver. Then we get a federated market across a range of different things. And then you know, investors realize that actually digital bonds are cheaper than regular way bonds. And then they kind of go, actually, I'd like to buy more of those, less of these. How do we get? And then you start to get the inflection point where that, that market develops. And I think that was the qualifier that Justin put on the statement around is either this or that, like, or it's a competitive market. Certainly our view is it will become sort of evolutionary through competition rather than mandated by a central body saying, let's all get on this technology. So do you see any, you know, the question was asked before, what do you see as the biggest hurdles for actually realizing the potential uh, right now? What are the things that you were kind of uh, struggling with right now that by solving them we can go faster or we can be more efficient? Well, I think it's easy to kind of say regulatory, especially in the U.S. It's a kind of an easy answer, but it's, I think, a little deeper than that. I mean, I don't... Uh, you know, I don't belittle uh, the regulators um, ever, <laughs> but uh, you know, they're definitely an impediment in the, in, at least in the U.S. There's a definite negative bias, um, but that's not all there is. So I think I mentioned already fragmentation. I think that's makes adaptation very difficult. Um, there's no standards. You know, kind of all the things that you know. Again, it, every single time financial services innovates on its S curve has the same exact problems when there's new technology that comes. So um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, kind of lack of trust, you know, the sins of what we've just lived through over the past, you know. And the, she, where she's talking about FTX, um, all those other cryptocurrency platforms that went down Celsius, um, BlockFi, um, and the Terra Luna um, 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 fiasco. Um, and probably many more uh, are out there. I can't, you know, like uh, my. You know. But at the end of the day, they're still building, and this is what happens uh, um, when things go wrong, or or, or say um, scam, massive scams happen. You know, there's a washout, but there's still a major washout to come anyway. I must stress that, and that is to do with the amount of digital assets that are on the market. There's way too many of them. And, I'm, and unfortunately, not all will survive because not all have a use case. And this is where I'm focused on use case digital assets like XRP, XLM, XTC, um, HBAR, um, those types of uh, um, cryptocurrencies, anything that has um, Casper even um, that has a use case. I don't subscribe to half the meme coins or, or, or any of the meme coins or any of the NFTs to such. I've got some Shiba Inu, I have to admit. Um, and I've got a little bit of Pepe. But... Were they risks? Are they risky? I think they are much more riskier 
unless they have something going for it. Shiba Inu is um, doing stuff behind the scenes. Um, they are working. Um, Pepe, I have no idea what's going on with Pepe at, at the moment. And I suppose that was one of those mad rush things. You know, oh, Pepe, Pepe. But I'm still learning, like everybody else is, that utility is the key. 12, 18 months has also made um, investors skittish, for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I think those are some major, major themes. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the federation of platforms is helpful to deliver specific things. It does make the challenge of getting liquidity more difficult. So interoperability solutions like FinP2P or others are important. Other models of sub-custody across different platforms could be important. Um, the other one that's really sort of challenging is money. Like there is no cash on ledger. Like I mean, we have it internally on our own platform, but there is no solution to get money from one bank to another bank to another bank. So you know, solutions that have movement of assets on chain and cash through your fiat, like well, that just increases our liquidity risk on our liquidity risk framework and doesn't solve a problem for us. So I think the faster we can get to a point where there is a wider selection of cash on ledger solutions that are able to be credited and debited across different banks, because that's all it is. It's a you know, if someone wants to buy a bond that custodies at JP Morgan and so it's, the sellers at custody JP Morgan, the buyer custodies at State Street, like I need to move the bond and then be short cash, long cash, that's it. Like, you know, we can do credits and debits through SWIFT, we can do credits and debits across blockchain. Like, let's just figure out a way that we kind of get there. I mean, you know, the, the, the technology for that um, and the technology partners I work with hate me saying this, but it is, it is an engineering challenge. It's ones and zeros, put them in the right order and we can solve that. The, the legal bit of that is, is, is quite complicated. Uh, and this is the problem. Um, I think America um, is beating beating every asset on the head instead of giving some kind of guidance as to what you can do. They, it, the challenge is America at the moment. Everybody else is uh, um, getting on with it. And I think if America came on board, I think you would you would um, see a massive uptake in in the assets that will of value and they would make they would also have their legal framework for what kind of assets they want to see have um, clarity and um, work within the financial system but it is happening regardless of whether America sits on the, the fence or gets involved anyway I'm going to leave this here I'm going to play a couple more minutes and I'm going to leave it I think that's where you know, as you get past that initial risk appetite to do something and, and take some risk and you've got to be in a market where people are taking real risk otherwise it's just fun you know well, you've got to have real risk in it and otherwise you don't get to the bottom of the legal question that's where i think we start to see movement um and there's enough there's enough you know happening in the market there were five or six digital issuances um in the period sort of leading up to the end of 2021 and the sort of preceding couple of years there's been 20 since november 2021 to february 20 23 like you know there is an appetite and a cadence growing there's a number of different other tokenization platforms and methodologies to get things even tokenized that are starting to emerge so i think that you know there is momentum financial services are rubbish at r d because the point made previously about our investment horizon is like one year not two years we need to get better at it um we need to accept that enough economics to wash your face is good and then we can develop sort of you know multiple returns after that right anyway I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put a link in the description. You guys can go and watch the rest of this for yourselves and you can find out what um, assets they are going to be tokenized first. Anyway, I just wanted to play the challenges of what's going on within the system. And I do know that um, XRP, XLM, and XTC, um, HBAR, not financial advice, who are some of the tokens that will be utilized in some of these uh, projects. Quant as well, interoperable. Um, go and look for yourself, guys. Anyway, take care of yourself. Have a great day. Do check last out. Out.